Students, my name is Dr. Neeraj Bali from Department of Management, Volaga University. I welcome you all to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about Maclean Three Need Theory, which is a motivational theory and is also called as Maclean Human Need Motivation Theory. So it is called as three needs because we are talking about three needs which are achievement, power and affiliation. And out of these three needs, one need is always dominant as per Maclean. So we had talked about Maslow's need hierarchy theory which is uh, five needs and those five needs were predetermined and in a particular order Maslow had mentioned that some priority is there for these needs. But this David Maclean motivational theory says that needs are acquired over time based on experience as the experience of the employee will be there with the, within the organization as per that the needs will be acquired and out of the three needs one need will be dominant based upon experience and requirements of the employee this particular theory is very important for the organization behavior how the organizations will be motivated how the organization will perform will depend upon the employees and how the employees are motivated. Employees will be motivated only if the management is able to find their needs, the dominant need. As per the dominant need of the employee, the top management has to drive the managers. So what are these needs? Achievement is the first one. Need for achievement or achievement need. Need for achievement explains it better. A person who has a need for achieving, that is achievement need. A person or employee who has a need for power, he wants power. As compared to achievement and affiliation, he wants power. And third one is affiliation, team spirit. And he has more team spirit or more uh, uh, being nice to the people that kind of need as compared to power and achievement so let us talk about the achievement one first the person who wants achievement who has a need for achievement and who has a domi who has a dominant need of achieving something is a task oriented person task means any job any work he wants to do some jobs some work some activities some projects second this kind of person is liking risky and challenging jobs it should be risky and challenging not simple ones it should challenge its, its his ability, ability to achieve something third is performance and achievement orientation these kind of achievement needing employees focus on completion of work to perfection and then they want to have a sense of achievement a performance I did it I finished it better than others they are very competitive people for example, I did this target and nobody could achieve and I could achieve this kind of person I am talking about. Fourth point is focus on the future and growth. They are growth oriented people. They want growth and they look for future. They will do all the activities and they will, all, they will achieve all the things as for growth, for future, for better future. Next is 
they want feedback for improvement if we don't give them feedback they will feel demotivated so they want feedback why feedback so that they can improve themselves success motivates them achievement sense of uh performance that i could do it as compared to others i was better this kind of feeling is what keeps them moving they are always in they are not stable they are always moving towards growth moving towards future moving towards achievement and performance and moving towards self improvement so this kind of person is wanting achievement to succeed as compared to other two needs other two needs are submissive they are not so important for them let's talk about other things in achievement what kind of risk do you think students aapko kya lagta hai ki kaun sa risk ye log lenge which risk is preferred by achievement uh, the for by the employees who need achievement they would prefer low risk medium risk or high risk low risk means very easy simple task medium is somewhat in between low and high and high is very difficult to achieve so if i ask you question students what kind of risk would they prefer can you think for a minute what is your answer in your mind what comes to your mind because to think is important i can tell you but try to under, try to think which kind of risk would they prefer then i will answer you main ye kehna chahta hu ki dosto aapko samajh aa raha hoga aur आपको ये बता रहा है कि इन तीनों रिस्क में से सबसे ज़्यादा रिस्क कौन सा प्रेफर करेंगे अचीवमेंट ओरिएंटेड लोग पहला नंबर वाला दूसरा नंबर वाला या तीसरे नंबर वाला इसका आंसर मैं भी आपको दूंगा आप सोचिए सो आंसर फॉर दिस इज द एम्प्लॉयज हु हैव नीड फॉर अचीवमेंट विल डेफिनेटली गो फॉर मीडियम रिस्क so the question is why not low risk and why not high risk they will not go for low risk because it is not an difficult work it is not it is simple it is too easy to achieve everyone is achieving it then there is no sense of achievement in that that's why they will ignore it like for example in a class if everyone gets a plus then it has no meaning there is no sense of achievement for a plus second is medium risk medium is that it is not so easy everyone is not able to do it and or it is very difficult that kind of task they want and they will avoid high risk high risk means in 10 classes nobody has got a plus trying for that kind of uh, grade they don't want it because they want to have effort linked with success fair amount of success not very rare it should be fair amount so medium risk is what they are looking at i hope i have made myself clear next is next is power need so what is power need power need there are two types of categorization as per mcleland the first one is first categorization is personal as compared to institutional so what is personal power need personal power need means power for getting your work done employees work done not focusing on organizational needs only about personal requirements for example misusing the authority for getting the work done for your your work done like for example your boss has given you some assignment you give your work to some subordinates juniors let them do it and after that you will take credit for personal credit for that that is using the power for your personal use not for organization second is institutional power need using the power for getting the growth for the organization 
using the power for getting the success for the organization. Example is boss will use his power, his authority to increase coordination in the team. He will use his power. If somebody is not following the rule, he will use his institutional power and streamline the team. That is an example for that. That is a good example. So personal power against institutional power. What do you students think? Which one is better? And which one is should be encouraged? In dono mein se cons, aap, you think about it and have an answer. Person or institutional mein se students, kaun sa jada behtar hai? Kaun sa aap ise pasand karayenge? Mujhe iska jawab dijiye. Sochiye aur bataiye. So the answer is definitely institutional power is good not the personal because institutional power is giving growth to the organization on the other hand personal power is demotivating the subordinates and in return organization growth or organization goes for a decline motivation of the team goes down so institutional power is more important and personal power needs should be avoided. Let's talk about the second type, aggression versus persuasion. Aggression means dominating nature. Try to win the argument no matter what. I am the best. Trying to control people's life, control people. Try to dominate them by bullying them and trying to make them convinced that he, he, I am always right and even trying to alter others behavior as per your choice that is aggressive behavior that kind of aggression is there in some people so they want to win their wars they want to win their uh, arguments at any cost to keep up their egos false egos Next is persuasion. Persuasion is the manager persuades the team and using his uses his interpersonal influence to convince people rather than being dominating and aggressive. So I have already answered persuasion is the thing which we must focus on, not the aggression. Aggression is damaging to the organization. Persuasion method, interpersonal influence is uplifting and team spirit is increased and there is more coordination in the organization in the teams so this is what we are looking at so in power needs people who need power they should focus on institutional power needs and persuasion type of power should be used by them and personal as well as aggression power types should be avoided now we talk about affiliation the last need in affiliation need the focus of the person is being or uh, is on being nice and avoiding conflict taking concept from team before making any decision they don't want this kind of people don't want any conflict in the team they don't want to make anybody angry and they are ready to be flexible if somebody raises objection on any decision. So they are very goody goody types people. Yes sir, yes sir type people. And uh, they are willing to cooperate. They are willing to go out of the way to help others so that they are in good books. Now the point is all needs are important for the organization. We cannot say that one particular need is important all three needs are important and organization requires all three needs organization want people who want to achieve uh, because without achievement without performance organization cannot go ahead second is good use of power is required by the managers to streamline the teams to make them disciplined Third, too much conflict in an organization is not good. 
so affiliation need is also important so these three needs should be in balance and should be there in all the organizations all three needs are important every person of all these three categories are required like for example some people with achievement need need for achievement should be there at least who are having dominance and achievement some people who are power want power that kind of people are required third is who want affiliation team spirit people all these three types of people are required as you are knowing that this particular theory says only one need will be dominant it does not mean the other needs are not there but they are there but in less quantity but all these three dominant needs people are required in the organization so uh ummeed karta hu doston aapko sab samajh mein aa gaya hoga so that's all about it and uh, now i would like to uh, just say that uh, all these needs are important and we have to find the correct dominant need in the employee so that we know what area to focus in that particular employee for motivating him if we are not able to identify which is a dominant one which dominant need is there in the employee maybe we are not able to motivate him because we may focus on other things but he wants something else so this is very critical that we identify which is a dominant need which need is dominant in that employee and as per that we have to help him to achieve that now if one employee wants achievement need so maybe i will offer him sales job because sales people are good in achievement somebody is having uh, say affiliation need maybe i offer him training job some people have power need maybe i offer him supervisory job so like this we have to identify what kind of person is he in the sense which need dominates him that way the top, top management can motivate the employees and give the right roles to them so that there is success in the organization thank you very much for listening to me if you have any doubts please feel free to comment have a good day see you